Y'all ever heard of Black Adder? I didn't either. This was actually requested by Manny Paredes. So thank you. Um, exposing me to a new thing that I honestly am surprised I've never heard of. So if you also want your request for a Media Mementos video to become a reality, then please consider donating to the Patreon. There's a link down below. We say that in pretty much almost every video, but, you know, changes happen. But anyway, what the hell is this? Well, it's a British sitcom that is hailed as one of the best in the entire country. That's right, it's that good apparently. And it was co-created by Rowan Atkinson, best known for portraying the slapstick icon Mr. Bean, and co-created by Richard Curtis, also known for co-creating Mr. Bean, and also making these movies that are mostly really good and you should check them all out. Main character is Edmund Blackadder, played by Rowan Atkinson, one of the show's co-creators, and follows his grave misfortunes. And that's kind of it. He's this aristocratic dude who always gets into trouble, he is morally gray, and he is assisted by his servant, Baldrick, played by Tony Robinson. There really isn't much to go off for that, other than that there are many different characters, including the princes, the lieutenants, and the lords, all bouncing off of each other in just kind of your typical dark humor British sitcom fashions. It really isn't anything special, I'm not gonna lie. Now, the main gimmick of the show is that each season or series, which really only consists of like, what, six episodes in the UK, all feature a different timeline and a new set of characters. Although the titular Black Adder is still the main character, and there's a heavy implication that they're all in the same family line, but that's more up to interpretation given that they were all bachelors. So maybe it's just one huge coincidence of all these guys with the same name that look almost exactly the same. I mean, there you go. The same goes for other main characters as well, including Baldrick, who was basically Blackadder's superior half in the first series, and then in the next series, he was the idiot, while Edmund was the manipulative one, and then series three, they switch back to first one. Yeah, you kind of get what I'm going at here. There's also another scheming aristocrat, who is also pretty fucking stupid. He was Lord Percy Percy in the first two series and played by Tim McEnery, but was replaced by Hugh Laurie playing a similar role as three different freaking characters. Although, don't be fooled by the cosmetic changes, they're pretty much the same character. Yeah, that's kind of a problem, but we'll get there in a little bit. I want to say right now that there are some really good things to say about this show. For one thing, I love the production design of this thing. It may be comical, sure, but it has that same effect as the Shrek franchise, where it kind of draws the line between authenticity and parody. But at the end of the day, it's still very nice to look at, and on its own, you can just stare at the shots and set pieces for hours, just for how pretty they look. Same thing with the costuming as well. Again, parody, but still very effective, and definitely shows what exactly they're trying to represent in such a way that it feels like a loving tribute. I also like the attention to detail and making sure that each time period in the show is not repeated or blends in with one another. It'd be so easy to just, you know, make Black Adder 2's Queen Elizabeth setting pretty much the same as the Richard IV alternate timeline. And thankfully, they don't really do that. I mean, yeah, sure, the first Black Adder has significantly more attention to detail than the second, but hey, I appreciate the effort even though it's a little bit inconsistent. Black Adder the Third, you know, with the Regency aesthetic, adds a lot more to the visual flair. I mean, look at these costumes, it's crazy. But then we get to Black Adder Goes Forth, which is significantly darker than the last three seasons, being a little bit more of a serious tone, given that this is set during the First World War, and Black Adder is actually a captain this time. And the misfortune this time comes from poor planning on Aunt Black Adder's part when trying to take down enemy lines. And in a way, it just really displays a fucked up caricature of the First World War, or just the element of war in general, which is very difficult for a comedy. And the fact that they also go for a more semi-serious tone definitely portrays how they're not really taking this super lightly like, say, the other topics explored in, like, the Crusades in the first one. And this is exemplified in the ending, goodbye. You can say how cringy that was in the comments, please. Where Captain Blackadder and his troops finally decide to go forth with their attack, running into the deep fog of no man's land and are implied to have been killed by the enemy troops. And it's not even played up for laughs. This is like a legitimate like moment for the characters. And given that this was the last episode of the mainline show, wow. And this was labeled as one of the most poignant finales or any moment for any sitcom ever to be aired on television, UK or otherwise. I'd say this definitely is the 
epitome of the show, even though I myself didn't really see much epitome in it anyway, but still, this is some crazy stuff. I was definitely surprised at how tonally different this was, especially given how samey the first three seasons felt. Speak of the devil, let's... let's address that. I'm sorry to say, but it didn't really interest me that much, and I didn't really find it all that funny. Maybe it's because I had to watch the show on a deadline and I couldn't really take the time to digest everything, or maybe it's just not my cup of tea, or I don't know. And I'm a big fan of the works of Richard Curtis and Rowan Atkinson. I mean, I love Richard Curtis's film works, and I'm a big fan of Atkinson. I love Mr. Bean. So, why didn't it work for me? Once again, I can't really say for certain, but I can say it has a very sadistic edge and a lot of misconception with the dialogue and character banters with all the over-exaggerated chipper British accents. And I mean, I guess it can be funny for a while, but it kind of gets overkill a lot of the time. And if anything, it just kind of borders on stereotypes being funny rather than just, you know, actually being funny. That's just my examinations at least. And it kind of does ruin the whole atmosphere of these comical yet loving tributes to the pieces of history. It's not like other pieces like, once again, Shrek, where there's a fine line between parody and authenticity. Although I went in more detail earlier and I said that the first and fourth ones definitely seem to have that completely understood as opposed to two and three where it's purely cosmetic. Although, that's not really the biggest issue I have with the series. The next point, I truly believe, is why this show really didn't appeal to me. Now, it may seem like I'm just harking on a cute approach that has all the same actors reunite and swap roles and character traits. Think the Christopher Guest documentaries like A Mighty Wind and Best in Show or Edgar Wright's Cornetto trilogy. They largely feature the same actors and snappy writing styles. However, what makes those succeed is that despite sharing similar talent with each film, they all feel distinct from one another. For instance, you just cannot compare Hot Fuzz to Shaun of the Dead because they are very different tonally and the actors don't portray the same characters as before or the same but swapped. Blackadder, on the other hand, doesn't really have much variation with its characters and writing style aside from assigning different basic roles that are still the same character but with a different actor. Even in series 4, as great as that is by comparison, the roles and mannerisms remain largely the same and a lot of the dark humor banter is still carried over. Having that same British dark humor that we see in other comedic media as well, like books, movies, or TV shows, it blends in more with the crowd rather than stand out on its own. It just has a really cool aesthetic. If it had continued the approach to, say, season one, I feel like I'd enjoy the show just a bit more. I still wouldn't claim it as an amazing series, no doubt, but I would definitely be more impressed. Because of the multitude of the previously mentioned points, I truly believe Blackadder falls short due to it really trying to compensate for a lazy writing approach by having cool visuals and a gimmick style. This further makes the show feel way more samey than it needs to, and truly becomes unremarkable. One more comparison, Atkinson and Curtis's other work, Mr. Bean, is fantastic because Atkinson not only owns the title character, but the slapstick style and the reactions to the world and characters around him give the project a separate identity that cannot be mocked, or at least, well. We see Mr. Bean, it's just Mr. Bean. You cannot imitate that anywhere else aside from well, Atkinson playing Mr. Bean. You could put Edmund Blackadder and his buddies in a modern dingy apartment, the Old West, some local carnival, a local diner, or hell, even outer space, homeboys in outer space, and I swear, nothing, and I mean nothing, would be different. Now, okay, in theory, this shows that the premise can work in any given environment, right? Yeah, you know, it would still be good, but I feel like it works in the opposite direction. It only displays that the series and characters are so interchangeable, so one-dimensional, that they literally have no identity to call their own. Which in general, is not what you want for a long-standing series, let alone one that is labeled as one of the best comedy shows ever. And the whole idea, the implication that all these Edmund Blackadders are somehow related to each other, doesn't feel charming or endearing in any way because of it. It just feels like an excuse for such a back-ass approach. And that 
makes me very disappointed in this series. There's a lot more to go off of, like one-off TV specials, including a Christmas Carol parody, but I really don't have the time right now. I have so much in my life going on. Film shoots, film shoots, and film shoots, so yeah. I'll, um, uh, I'll just leave it at that. I really wanted to enjoy the show. I, I really did, but I just couldn't, and I'm, like, big into history.